Welcome to the Grand Theft World podcast, hosted and sponsored by the fine members at GrandTheftWorld.com. You'll notice that I'm on the road this week. We're on family vacation, and we're a little late getting started. We had some tech issues tonight, still having some tech issues, but we're doing the show anyway because we got so much news to cover this week. We had, as you see in the thumbnail, Marjorie Taylor Greene go before Congress and show off some of the things that were on Hunter Biden's laptop. And the things that were on his laptop are so salacious that they're probably not for most viewers but it's an attention grabbing screenshot the thumbnail for this show i screenshotted while she was doing that and i said this needs to go in everyone needs to consider the bifurcation in our legal and justice system and the investigatory uh, special agencies like fbi who take all these things that are criminal over here and they're like there's no big deal and they take all these things over here that aren't criminal and they're like that's a big deal and there's a huge uh, divide being created artificially through this not so equal justice system. I would like to talk with you both about Hunter Biden and his tax write offs with his law firm, Owasco. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Ziegler, when did you start your investigation and your testimony? It was November 2018. Is that correct? Yes or no? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. During your testimony with the, House, with the House Ways and Means Committee, you stated that through bank records, you identified Hunter Biden was paying prostitutes related to a potential prostitution ring. Is that correct? Yes or no? Yes, that's correct. I've also reviewed that those same bank reports, commonly referred to as SARS, suspicious activity reports, and I'm very troubled by them. We read thousands of them in the Treasury. This particular excerpt from a SARS report talks about human trafficking uh, and in regards to Hunter Biden and Owasco and, and payments he was making. What's even more troubling to me is that the Department of Justice has brought no charges against Hunter Biden that will vindicate the rights of these women who are clearly victims under the law. Um, I would like to talk about in your prior testimony, you stated that the prosecutorial team was investigating violations of the Mann Act. Is that correct, Mr. Ziegler? That is correct. Regarding the Mann Act, if a person is transported across state lines for sexual activity, such as pros prostitution, that could be a violation of a federal law. Is that correct? Uh, I actually recently looked at the federal law regarding Mann Act, and I believe that that is correct, but I would refer you to the DOJ manual. Thank you. I would like to uh, present this to the committee. This is showing Hunter Biden paying for a victim's United flight from L.A. to Dulles. This was a, I believe this is a violation of the Mann Act. This is Hunter Biden's, this is his... Uh, proof that he bought the ticket. He bought it for this woman right here. Um, she, he flew her from Los Angeles to Washington on June 14th, flew her back to uh, Los Angeles, California on June 15th of 2018. And I would like to um, point out that if he was purchasing her a plane ticket for sex and traveling across state lines, do you believe that to be a violation of the Mann Act, Mr. Ziegler? So I can talk to specifically what's in my tran or what's in my transcript regarding the Mann Act. So I know we were compiling the information together. Yes, but Mr. Ziegler, travel as as the law states by the by the code of the law, it states traveling, paying someone to go across state lines. Is, is prostitution, it's a violation of the Mann Act. Let me just move on just one more, one more second here. Uh, so when, her, when Hunter Biden paid for this woman to do this with him, to travel across state lines from California to Washington, D.C. on June 15th, this is a violation of the Mann Act. This was prostitution. Let me continue. Did Hunter Biden also use his company, Owasco PC, to pay prostitutes? Can you hold on one second? Mm, chairman? Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll give you this additional time back. Thank you. That was
We don't know that for sure. This will provide additional information. So regarding Man Act violations, what we can do is, given by the statute, uh, we can turn those over to the House Ways and Means Committee, and then we can they, they can decide to vote to turn them over to you regarding Man Act. Yep, thank you, Mr. Ziegler. Um, so talking about Hunter Biden using his company, Owasco PC, to pay prostitutes, this is also a sp suspicious activity report showing that victim one, the, the woman that was paid for prostitution, that traveled from California to Washington, D.C., paid for by Hunter Biden. This is a, an excerpt from a SARS report that we've read in the Treasury, and I think you, you all have looked at these two, showing that victim one was supposedly an employee of Owasco. Um, but, but I would like to point out, this is not really what most paralegals do for law firms. Um, and, and it's very serious that Hunter Biden was paying this woman through his law firm and then writing it off as business tax exemptions. Most, most people write off, uh, you know, their tax, write off things for their taxes through their businesses like a meal or uh, say office supplies. Um, but can you confirm for me that Hunter Biden had written off payments to prostitutes through his law firm, Owasco? I appreciate the question given by the statute uh, I'm limited in my testimony today, and I, I respectfully would need to turn those records over to the House Ways and Means Committee. Okay, th thank you, Mr. Ziegler. One, one, last, one last question. Uh, you referred to one of the assistants as West Coast assistant. I believe this is the West Coast assistant. Could you agree with that? So I can tell you that there were deductions for what we believe to be escorts, and then that $10,000 golf club membership Yes, that was not a golf club membership. That was for a sex club payment. That was for a sex club payment. Um, payments such as this through from, from Hunter Biden to prostitutes. Um, also, Mr. Shapley. Come on. M Mr. Chairman, um, we're at 1 minute and 53 seconds over. As long as Ms. Ocasio-Cortez can get equal time, I, she can I, keep going. I, I will uh, let, let uh, Ms. Green wrap up. Uh, Five seconds, and thank then uh, I'll give Mr. Mufume additional time. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Shapley, you, you started an investigation into Hunter Biden, codenamed Sportsman, which opened in November of 2018. Um, it, it was an offshoot of an investigation the IRS was conducting into a foreign-based amateur online pornography platform. Um, this this is evidence uh, Mr. Mr. Of, Mr. of Hunter Mr. Biden Mr. making sex. Hey, excuse me, this is my time. Making okay. pornography. Should we be displaying Mr. this, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Did, 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 the did a lady's time's expired and uh, went two and a half minutes Mr. over. Chairman. New evidence that Biden bribed or was bribing, paying bribes, receiving bribes, $5 million from Burisma. Now, you take that little piece of information that we got this week and you add it to him already admitting it and then the text saying they're doing it and the email saying there's like four or five points of verification that this is going on and yet not a whole lot of investigation. But on the flip side of that story, they're about to indict, arrest former President Donald Trump over January 6th, which uh, is also a, a bigger conundrum for the country because there's been exonerating evidence for January 6th out there for a long time, and it has been covered up by the same people who hide Epstein's client list and hide Hunter Biden's business dealings from the American public. If it wasn't worth hiding, they wouldn't be hiding it. If it was out there and would have no causality, they wouldn't be hiding it. This has causality. These are some of the biggest stories of this century, and they're being suppressed systematically using your taxpayer dollars through government to play with the play footsie with the social media companies. I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was what, six hours. I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, well, son of a bitch. <laughs> you got fired. Well, there's another layer in the Burisma Biden scandal. Today, Senator Chuck Grassley released an unclassified FBI document alleging that Joe Biden and Hunter Biden coerced Burisma CEO Mikola Zlajewski to pay them $5 million in exchange for their help 
in getting the Ukrainian prosecutor investigating the company fired. With us now with more details is radio talk show host and political analyst Garland Nixon. Garland, yeah. welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me, Kim. So uh, you, you've been really following this uh, really well and breaking this down nicely for a lot of people that are listening to your show. Um, so help us understand this. What was this document that was released by Senator Grassley today? Well, it was an FBI document. And as I understand it, <clears throat> it's um, what a lot of law enforcement uh, officers would call an investigation report, right? It's you, you know, and you, you start an investigation and you write a report. This is the basics. This is what I have. And their form is the one, uh, 1023 or something like that. But at, at any rate, so um, what we found was that um, apparently in 2018 and 2020, the FBI had talked to a source. This person apparently was very high up in the company Barisma, um, where Hunter Biden worked. And, and I will add this, this isn't a Hunter Biden scandal, this is an FBI scandal, to be quite frank. Um, oh. So what we found out is that, I mean, more to me, it's more of an FBI, uh, uh, FBI scandal than a, than a Hunter Biden scandal, because what the guy comes to the FBI and, you know, we all kind of have a little bit of an idea of what happened. You know, Joe Biden was pretty much running Ukraine. He was pretty much what the, the, the British would use the term viceroy back in their colonial days when they overthrew a government, a, a country, they put somebody in charge. That person would be either called the governor or the viceroy, a colonial ruler. That's what Joe Biden was for Ukraine. Um, but it, interestingly enough, immediately after he became the colonial ruler of Ukraine, um, Burisma, a large gas company, then hired his son. And they also hired a guy named Kofor Black, who was a very high ranking former member of the CIA. And they also ha ha hired the former prime minister of Poland. So mm -hmm. it was a, uh, a shady crew going on here. Well, what we found out now is some of uh, one of the high ranking members of this company, Burisma, went to the FBI and told them a number of things, including that they hired um, uh, Hunter Biden specifically so that he could use his father to get the cases. They had um, a number of investigations going on against them specifically so that his father could get those cases closed. In fact, an email recently came from, uh, was, was uh, unearthed from Hunter Biden's laptop in which the guy sent an email complaining to Hunter Biden saying, look, we wrote up what we wanted you to do and you didn't write any in there that your job was to stop these cases. And he said, but I understand if you, you know, wanted to keep that quiet, but we want to make sure that you understand we are hiring you to get these cases closed against our co uh, company. Other stories this week, uh, Ireland had to kill 200,000 cattle because of the global warming. So they have successfully brought the meme to life. You know, they've convinced you that the cows and all these natural things are the threat and that these big giant corporations that are taking over the planet, they're your friends. They're doing it again for climate change. So now there's so remember they shut down Dutch farmers. So here's what I'm saying about climate change. Uh, even if everything they say that is happening, uh, climate change, meaning environmentally, their solutions are bullshit. And so I will no longer go along with the establishment or Greta Thunberg because she is a psyop in bed with war pigs who are destroying the environment. Wait, you're telling me this girl that never went to school doesn't know what she's talking doesn't, about? She doesn't know, turns out she doesn't know what she's talking about. So it turns out now the Irish, they're doing it to the Irish. Ireland, farmers on streets as the government wants to kill 200,000 cows to meet climate change goals. Ah, beautiful Holland where the streets are paved with cow shit. But that is when you get, that's what you get when you F around with the food <laughs> supply, pretending you're the good guy trying to rescue humanity. This is how they're going to rescue the climate, slaughtering 200,000 cows on ir Irish farms. Is this like a, a, a carbon offset for that pipeline they blew up? Right. So these same people who are telling you they have to do this are the same people that just blew up the Nord Stream pipeline are the same people who are waging war endlessly. They're the same people flying around the world on private jets. And um, they're the same. So the United States has a thousand military bases. The number one emitter of carbon in the world 
is the United States military. Why nobody ever says, "Hey, let's shut down a couple of hundred U.S. military bases around the world." Maybe we could. No, the first thing they do is they go after f- Dutch farmers and now Irish farmers. I say I don't believe anything that they say about. I know that this. You know, when you recycle, it doesn't get recycled. <laughs> Just so that's the first lie they're telling you. Everybody still recycles, but that stuff doesn't get recycled. It goes through a landfill because China stopped taking our recyclables. They're like, we're not just throwing this away for you anymore. That's right. So they're lying about climate change. They're lying about how to fix climate change. This isn't how to do it. Well, the Nord Stream pipeline, if it's if methane, that was the largest amount of methane ever released at once by humans, right? Or something like that? Yes. It was. So if it's such a dire thing, you would think that would figure into the plans like, hey, this proxy war, maybe we shouldn't uh, release this methane in the air because it'll be disastrous. It's, no, they don't care. Oh, just, I guess all the cows in Ireland will die. <laughs> they'll make up for it. So they're going to kill 200,000 cows to meet climate change goals, Kurt, because at least they're being honest about the fact their version of I'm saving the environment means getting rid of us. <laughs> That's yeah, what it sounds like. it's a real like. solution. And if you don't think they, they don't see us as people as cattle, I guess you haven't flown lately. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever, who's the guy that wrote about the Russian gulags? Uh, I don't know. Famous, I forget, but they say all people that were in that in the Soviet during the Stalin era, even that was better service in the airlines. Like Even that was a better, <laughs> more spacious and less hassle. So now killing, now ki- literally killing equals rescuing so they're going to say that they're, well they're going to rescue us now from the climate and how do they do it they're going to kill two hundred thousand. so here's what the wall street silver says he says just in farmers in ireland are protesting against the government's plan to slaughter two hundred thousand dairy cows to reduce greenhouse gas emissions fifty five thousand direct and indirect jobs are threatened why do governments push these crazy plans to reduce the food supply I don't know, but I don't know. The establishment is once again using fear of climate change to shut down farms. The biggest emitter of carbon dioxide in the entire world is the U.S. military, but nobody ever mentioned shutting any of the thousand military bases the U.S. has around the world. It's because they don't really give a shit about climate change and only use it to transfer wealth upwards and to control you. Uh, they're going to serve this up daily. They're, they're, it's just growing momentum because the, the producers are being encouraged to be the NPCs, and it's encouraging their audiences to kind of facilitate that whole uh, slippery slope to idiocracy. You probably saw this and were wondering, is it as bad as I think? Yes. Is there a marshmallow? Crunchy corn, yum! Kitty paws, <laughs> Welcome to TikTok's latest wholesome contribution to society. It's literally called the NPC trend. Oh, bro. Fire, fire, meow. Hee ha, yes. You got me feeling like a cowgirl. Balloon. So simps spend actual money to buy TikTok tokens in the form of cartoon stickers, ice cream cones, donuts, roses, then NPC streamers react to receiving them with scripted catchphrases and repetitive sex robot style movements. Ooh, ooh, gang gang, gang gang, gang gang. At the end of the stream, when the NPCs cash out, some of them are making over $7,000 a day. That's after TikTok takes its 70% cut. The vast majority though aren't really making anywhere near that and are just badly copying the trend. (laughs) <laughs> a whole generation with thousand yard stares, hopelessly addicted to a Chinese spy app, now literally behaving like robotic computer code to feed their narcissism addled dopamine dependence. If you only knew how bad things really are. One of the most high profile progenitors of this slop is Cherry Crush, who calls herself an AI Tamagotchi. She's so childlike, cute, and innocent. Give her money. <laughs> And of course it turns out she's an online sex worker, an adult performer, otherwise known as a prostitute. Another top TikTok NPC live streamer, Pinky Doll, advertises a free sex tape once you subscribe. Mmm, ice cream's so good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The form likely originated with sex workers who would take donations from viewers in exchange for performing sexual acts. Right, so it's basically PG porn. The TikTok to OnlyFans pipeline. Yum. 
Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Another chance for TikTok to get underage boys hooked on the gateway drug of degeneracy. Greasing the skids for a lifetime of self-destructive simping. An actual porn addiction. Great, thanks for that. We definitely needed more of that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Thank you for the glizzies. <sighs> Remember, a quarter of TikTok's user base is aged 10 to 19. One million kids under 13 were found to be using the app in the UK. They're just pushing pre-porn on pre-teens again. It's basically half of what TikTok is at this point. Oh, but they're making so much money. Yeah, so did whale hunting. Doesn't mean it's good, does it? The Vice article admits the whole thing represents some dark fusion of fetish and cognitive gambling addiction. But then says anyone criticising it or saying it's bizarre is just angry and jealous. Because the trend feels a little too good to watch. Yeah, heroin feels good too. Should we feed it to kids? Rolling Stone lords the trend of having zero thoughts because it helps you stop stressing about the world's student debt and laws that make it harder for you to abort your baby. Sounds pretty good to me. They interviewed one of the originators of the trend who said, quote, You're letting go of your consciousness in order to achieve this higher level of enlightenment. Enlightenment? Really? Fire, 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 fire. Take your lily slay, huh? So enlightening. Roses. Um, 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 hot dog, yeah. Butter, eat your heart out. <laughs> I feel more enlightened already. It's strange, isn't it, that the same media establishment that clutches its pearls over the dangers of toxic masculinity and the male gaze is gushing in its defense of a trend that objectifies young girls as robotic sex dolls. Hi, I'm Barbie. Do you want a tour of my Barbie dream home? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. While rewarding them for being submissive, unthinking playthings for horny young men. Yes. Yes. Yes, Daddy. Yes. <laughs> yes. What a great role model. Go, feminism! But it's not just girls performing the trend, this brain rot has infected men too. GG. Thank you for the share. Soy Jack. I'm a fat cow. Uh, I love ice cream. So enlightening. Chicken, chicken! Also observe how they've basically succeeded in reappropriating the NPC meme, which used to be a savage critique of groupthink, intellectual cowardice, and exposed the dangers of mass conformity, and has now been supplanted by this. Roses. Ah, roses. Ah, roses. Ah, roses. People conforming on demand for cash and eating worms for money. By the way, guys, anyone that sends me a lion or a universe, lion or universe, I will eat night crawlers tonight live. I will literally take them out of a fishing container and eat night crawlers live. So enlightening. Lightning. <laughs> and all from the same entity that gave you the Tide Pod Challenge and other wholesome trends that literally killed a bunch of kids. We once again honor TikTok for its services to the mental stability of Gen Z. But hey, if you can't beat them, join them. Not like YouTube's paying me much, is it? I'm, I'm, I'm ice cream yum! I'm too old for this. You know, I feel like I should be sitting across from Dr. Lexus and getting uh, the examination right now after seeing the news from this week. Without further ado, let's go to Lou Pradowski of wearechange.org and thebestpoliticalshirts.com and let's kick off uh, with his report from earlier today. We'll get a little summary and then we'll dig into the news from the week. Hang out. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Holy freaking cow, imagine having a baby and trying to bring it to the hospital like that woman was and some blue-haired statist yuppie tells you no. 
You can't because you didn't give enough of your money to the government to make the weather gooder. What makes the Grand Theft World podcast unique, invigorating, exciting, and informative? Most other podcasts out there are either doing straight up interviews or they're just covering the daily news. They're covering current events from the day they happen. And that is effective. It's useful. It's a great starting point. And then sometimes these current events change during the week past the first story. So we like to give it a little time. You have to wait till some of the dust settles on these stories in order to give them accurate coverage. And the other thing that's really missing in the media landscape is covering the articles that are coming out every day. That's great. That's necessary. But who's bringing in contextual history so that you can understand what has been going on for decades and decades to lead up to the machinations and actions that we see unfolding today. So what we do here on the podcast is we cover current events. Many of these things are censored, but we wait about a week. As a forensic historian, I focused mainly through my career on the history of globalism and collectivism and things that they call maybe the new world order. There's a lot of facts to these sort of circumstances, groups, events, activities, working groups that they've had over time. So for Grand Theft World listeners, we not only break down the current events, most of which that are censored during the week, we provide you with contextual history. We give you the source notes, the references. We do deep dives, and this really empowers you with an understanding of context and history so that you can make more informed decisions in your life. There's also a community, a membership where you guys can actually ask questions and we can get into the show and share evidence. And there's a town hall weekly for Grand Theft World for those who listen to it and are interested in covering the stories that we don't get to during a six hour show. Listening to it an hour a day, you could uh, easily consume the week's news, but you're gonna have substance and meaning and context and understanding. And with that, you can make higher quality decisions in your life. So if you're interested in more quality in your life, go to grandtheftworld.com, click podcast at the top, and we'll see you there. Thank you. These allegations are false. This isn't Grand Theft Auto, folks. This isn't a video game. What are the most surprising things that you discovered once you started pulling on that thread, who he was connected to, what institutions he was influential over, what events he participated in? You don't have to think about it, dude. I got this quote because uh, you said you didn't know much about Klaus Schwab. I made it my job to, as soon as this happened, I'm like, okay, this guy's their front man. Let me learn about the official history of the World Economic Forum. I got their 40 year history. I got every book that Klaus Schwab has written or ghost written. I went through those books. This is one of the most interesting passages. Come on, man. Come on.